chapter 3 Demi na madadi wa giants of the tribe they had lived a long way back at the beginning of time they cut down trees and cleared the dense forest for cultivation they owned many cattle sheep and goats and they often sacrificed to Murungu and held communion with the ancestral spirits Oyaki had heard about these two generations of the tribe and he was proud of them only he wished he knew what they looked like they must have been great and strong to have braved the hazards of the forest sometimes in the bush he and the other boys played demina madadi one day a boy from koina told wayaki you cannot be demi why he asked the other boys came round you are not ready for circumcision you are not born again wayaki looked at the ground and felt small then he turned to the group and let his eyes fall on them his eyes were larger and rather liquid sad and contemplative but whenever he looked at someone they seemed to burn bright a light came from them a light that appeared to pierce your body seeing something beyond you into your heart not a man knew what language the eyes spoke only if the boy gazed at you you had to obey the half imploring half commanding look was insisting demanding perhaps that was why the other boys obeyed him his mother always turned her eyes away from his and some women and big girls remarked that he had made them feel shy but then women were always shy when men's eyes were on them wayaki was not aware of anything strange in his eyes although sometimes he felt something burn in him urging him to say and do daring things and that day he felt the urge come to him for a moment he thought himself demi and he answered back but i am demi and then he saw a tree a little distance away see if i don't cut down that tree he went on and he took an ox and rushed to the tree oblivious of everything he began to cut it with all his strength and soon the stick that was the ox fell into pieces at first the other boys had laughed but they soon followed his example and went around cutting down trees and clearing the forest ready for cultivation just like Demi and Madadi that day Wayaki went home and told his mother i must be born again now the day had come and when the sun rose and hit the ground and goats scratched themselves against the wall Wayaki went to the back of the hut and let the rays fall on his neck the burning was pleasant Wayaki wanted to be happy very happy was he not going to learn the ways of the land was he not going to drink the magic ritual of being born again he knew he wanted to be like his father knowing all the ways of the land from agu agu long ago but he felt dejected something he could not define seemed to gnaw at his soul having first crept through the flesh he wished kamau and kinobia were there to keep him company and yet he had wanted this thing as the sun shone on his skin he held his muscle tight and shut his eyes trying to recapture the feeling of importance he had experienced in the days of waiting the anticipation had been sweet now it did not matter only after today he would be ready for the biggest of all rituals circumcision this would mark his final initiation into manhood then he would prove his courage his manly spirit much beer had been brewed and many elders were beginning to arrive two had come early in the morning and were now busy slaughtering a goat everyone who was present would eat meat and the spirit of the dead and the living would be invoked to join the ritual the ceremony did not take long it was not even complicated his mother sat near the fireplace in her heart as if in labor oyaki sat between her thighs a thin cord taken from the slaughtered goat and tied to his mother represented the umbilical cord a woman old enough to be a midwife came and cut the cord the child began to cry and the woman who had come to wait for the birth of a child shouted with joy ai 
old Waiyaki is born, born again to carry on the ancient fire. For a time, Waiyaki forgot himself and thought he was Demi, bravely clearing the forest, a whole tribe behind him. But when he looked around and saw old women surrounding him, he began to cry again like a little child. He felt the pain of fear inside him. He tried to open his eyes wide, wide, and, and for a moment he had a flashing, maddening sensation that they would not open. He trembled and thought to himself, shrinking with cold. He had never felt this before, and tears continued flowing, falling to the ground. The women went on shouting, but Wayaki did not see them now. Their voices were a distant buzz like another he had heard in a dream when a swarm of bees came to attack him. He cried the more. People became frightened. This was not what usually happened. Later in the day, his mother went into the field. Wayaki, whose head had been shorn of hair, trailed behind her as a little child would follow its mother. And when she went to Honia River, he followed. She dipped him into the water and he came out clean. He went to bed early. A strange hollowness settled in his stomach. The whole thing had been a strange experience. He was glad that the ceremony was over. But somehow, a glow of pride was beginning. He was ready for initiation. End of chapter 3